your destination. Here it is on the internet at a podcast. We talk about things. This is binary jazz. Dot us and now dot you. Thanks for being here. No, uh, no. How that, works. <laughs> that doesn't work. No. It almost feels like you were practicing it. No. I, well, it was dot, dot you here's, here's just way, doesn't work. I mean, here's the way, here's the way opening dot you work. followed by an S. If Have you I'm been watching openings, PBS? No. Should I? Did they say like, that? For, for viewers like you. Oh, yeah. Um, when I do intros, it's because, like Chris says, three, two, one, Gary, you've intros, go. And then uh, it's uh, there's a moment of panic. There was a point in my life where I thought about, and we actually alternate intros, and I would think about it and plan ahead and have introductions for my co-hosts. Well, we still Allison, alternate, Chris. Gary. Oh, do we? And yes. I just haven't noticed the pattern? Right. Oh, damn. Well, that's my bad. Um, <laughs> apparently, we still alternate, and I have just lost track of the pattern. <laughs> I think I think uh, in these times we've just lost track of actual patterns of time. I still have I still sort of have in my head. I mean, I might get it wrong sometimes, but I still have in my head. I'm pretty sure that I did it last week, so it's Gary's turn this week. Okay, go. That, that's that's <laughs> the process before the okay go. In in any case, like it's a podcast, and we've talked about whatever Allison says we should talk about for a brief moment, and then we get sidetracked and talk about D and D and. Uh, other things and then we circle back to the topic at hand and are surprised at what it really is uh and then uh we answer um listener questions and that's it glad to have us did i introduce who we are chris allison gary sure binary jazz us from that website you can find links to other places like twitter the rest of the internet <laughs> github the myspace entire, the entire YouTube. internet is linked from our website my live uh, yeah the whole internet <laughs> If you, wanna, if you want Kevin Bacon's email address, come to our website. It's probably there. One internet. <laughs> Do you... <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I have to say some of my favorite moments are when you amuse yourself, but then don't explain it. <laughs> I, I mean, there's not a, much. I remember a version of the internet where a web url was there there was the 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 ongoing metaphor that your url was was akin to your physical home address do you remember those days simpler times simpler <laughs> times when you could think of a url as just an address that you like send mail to or something I remember my brother for one of my birthdays when I was a teenager gave me a domain name um, wow. that I could just choose. And it was a real struggle. <laughs> like, because it was just like, oh, what, who, like, who am I? <laughs> and of course, I wasn't going to choose my name. <laughs> I didn't have a domain name. I didn't have a domain name until I started freelancing. And the first domain that I owned was uh, thinktanks-studios.com, maybe? Do you remember when domains used to cost like $100 a year? To register? It, was, it was not. Yeah, it was, it was expensive in the early days. Yeah, for a long time, I didn't. For a long time, I, I freelanced based on like some like thinktank.zap2.org or something. Yeah. Yeah, was, like... Uh, which was a, a code slinger 69 at hotmail.com. Yeah. That's Chris. I actually still have that old email address here on my phone. For the longest time I had like a subdomain of my brother's site. And I think then he was finally like, I just don't even want, he's like, I don't even want you associated with my big Lebowski related domain name. I need you to go. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was the thing. Like I had, a, I had an sfgoth.net uh, 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 slash. Uh, address and I had a uh, JNST dot Ebhan dot uh, Redlands dot edu slash wow. uh, really catchy rolls off the tongue <laughs> well, well Ebhan uh, Ebhan uh, is an abbreviation of emotional black hole of need so um, that can sort of explain uh, what our uh, 
what the uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it took a minute for that to hit like you said that and it like it kind of like flowed over me like a wave. And then <laughs> I'm just like wait 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 what? So good. That was yeah. Stuff was... like this I wish that I was sitting next to you cuz I would just give you a big hug. <laughs> cuz he needs um, it. <laughs> apparently I, I didn't i didn't name it that was that was the name i had a bug the, in my ear <laughs> that was the name of the server for for uh for a long time before uh that was from our predecessors at at johnson college at the university of redlands um whoever whoever built the 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 they built a server room and computer lab in one of the dorm rooms um and when they built the server it was emotional black hole of need when uh, that sounds like a lot of servers I've worked with. Yeah. Um, also, um, back when it was cool to like name your systems different things, I thought I was so clever using Star Wars systems. So I had like Wait, it's not Dewey. it's not cool anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I still do it. I just can't speak to whether it's cool any longer. But I had Tatooine and I had Dagobah and blah blah blah. And I got a Palm computer and I thought I was so cool that I called it Death Star because it was a mobile system. Oh. And. Uh, and even speaking of that now, like I feel like I should have tape on my glasses, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 For a long time. So when I started, I, I've always named my my computers, um, and uh, I don't remember what the first pattern uh, was that I started using, but um, I I was given I was I can. When I worked for Event Espresso doing support and other things for them, um, my computer was on basically on its last legs. It was dying. Maybe the hardware. I don't remember why it was dying, but it was dying. It was getting slower and slower. And I would complain about it a lot. And so they came by around Christmas because they were local and brought me a big old uh, iMac. Uh, but they were talking about how they, uh, they were, might come by and they might stop by because – Garth, uh, one of the partners, uh, he's, they said that Garth's wife made a fruitcake uh, and they needed to deliver the fruitcake. And we're like, and I'm like, you know, fruitcake, we're not going to eat a fruitcake, but okay, I'll accept the fruitcake. Um, so they come by. Okay, and, I'll play this game. <laughs> yeah, they come by and there's this huge box. And I'm like, oh, is that the fruitcake? And they're like, yeah, that's the fruitcake. So obviously that needed to be fruitcake, right? Uh, so that computer is fruitcake. And then when we got more uh more max in the house they all had similarly themed names so um aaron's uh when we got an imac for aaron that became uh sugar daddy um yeah. <laughs> uh no that no 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 her first one was sweet cheeks it was sweet cheeks and then sugar daddy yeah uh, and then i think i ran out of names um <laughs> Do you do you think the concept of like VPS, like ephemeral host or ephemeral servers and all that crap is why it's just not as cool to name systems anymore? Because I mean, if you like you just spend your whole day like naming systems in some circumstances, it's just going to disappear. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's fair. Now all of the all the computers in the house are named after um, goddesses. So so mine is Aphrodite. <laughs> I love this so much. I'm so. <laughs> I was just thinking, like this weekend, I'm going to be like walking around the house, like naming, every, renaming every device around. Like, what are you doing? We need a theme. It's just <laughs> yeah. not working for me. All these devices the have theme like. Is, theme is not, not working. So mine is Aphrodite. Uh, Aaron's is Venus, and uh, so all these themeless packets flying through the air. <laughs> oh, so you're mixing it up. It's not just like Greek no, or yeah, Roman. Yeah, it's like... it's mixed up. Yeah, uh, and <laughs> I'm in. I'm so bought into that. The, <laughs> One that we reformatted for the kids was uh, the laptop was Eusephrines, I think, or something. There's, it's, it's sort of a goddess of joy and, and, and I don't know, play that seemed appropriate. And now we're, uh, <laughs> and, and that's, yeah. Now we're all thinking about these. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. It's, I, I don't know if you can hear the birds. Can you hear the birds? Oh. A little bit. A little. Um, it was like 55 degrees this morning at my coffee. So apparently the bugs don't mind either. The bugs are really bothering me at the moment. Maybe I should bathe. Um, I came outside uh, and had my coffee on the porch and watched birds like doing birdie things. And it's uh, uh, it's like, I don't know if spring has officially sprung here. I'm not, I haven't been here long enough to know if this is like fake spring and we're going to get like another blast, but 
what is it? It's like the 12th of March. I don't know. I planted grass seeds a week and a half ago and they died like pretty immediately because I went too early with them. Um, I think I'm going to probably have to plant some more grass seeds this weekend and hopefully that's, maybe I shouldn't plant them this weekend. I maybe have, if I do that, I'm inviting the cold back. I have uh, a new obsession for you, Gary. Um, because you say birds doing birdie things. Do you know what any of those birds are? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. I know lots of the birds. Yes. Okay. You can name them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, this <laughs> might, name this them might as be. Name them as Homer as is the fat bird. Like, well, I that's... do. I've already named. <laughs> yes. If you, if you know the species of birds, and this is maybe slightly less of an out of left field uh, obsession, but uh, Aaron uses the app iNaturalist. Yes, I love it. Okay. Yes. Then you're already on board. iNaturalist, for those of you who don't know, which might just be Allison, uh, iNaturalist <laughs> is an app where um, you can uh, take pictures of plants, animals, bugs, any sort of creature that you find living in the area and, see, and record a spotting of that thing. Um, and if you don't know what it is, then you submit the picture and then a whole bunch of other people will like pile on and say oh it's that thing and then there's like there's also there's also a version called seek by iNaturalist that does some real rudimentary recognition Mm. so you can take a photo of or yeah take a photo of something and it's like uh, isn't it a red wing something or other and you're just like it is (laughs) well no like you hold your camera up there and it will identify it so Q Gary moving to North Carolina, looking at all these plants and but down in this app and being like, what's this thing? So I have a picture of me like holding this plant in my hand and the identifier underneath it is poison ivy. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, but I, I uh, like that's a privet right there, that tree. Uh, we have, no, I can't remember the name of it. I have a, a, two huge gardenia bushes right here. Oh, um, nice. I have... Uh, the, the trees I'm in love with are hickory trees. I have like one big one there, a smaller one. And then there's this enormous one that's split at the trunk. It's like two trunks coming up. Um, and hickory trees grow like very slowly. So that one there was like there long before the house and was a full grown tree. I mean, it's, it's, it's just like, I'm, I'm really into the, the growy stuff around here. The other thing that you can do with iNaturalist is you can look at uh things that have been spotted in your area you can look at like a a, like a google Mm -hmm. satellite map uh, Mm -hmm. of the area that you're in or any area you could go to other places and see what uh, and then you see all the all the spottings um with like little picture icons and you can go into it and see so like you could see and and you can see it like what, what, what what's recent so one of the things that we wanted to do um like if we ever lived someplace coastal um knowing when certain like animal species and tide pools have been spotted would be a really good thing to know, to know where to go to find the, to find cool mm-hmm. stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Because we usually find that like Aaron's usually doing all that spotting and like putting it in and like, then she'll, she'll look at the thing like months later. I'm like, Oh, there's a whole bunch of like this thing that was, that's at that place that we just were. And now we're not there. Um, so being able to like, to like sort of follow that and be able to go to the place like oh they're they're out now we can go see or like you know this is the low tide and they've they were spotted last month so we can go and see if we can find them that would be a really cool thing um but yeah it's it's a it's a neat thing did i have i told you about my squirrel feeder no squirrel feeder you're feeding squirrel feeder yeah 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 we uh i mean there's tons of them around and they like they don't they don't mess with the bird seed here I don't know why. I mean, they'll eat it like if it falls, but they don't like to try and climb into the bird feeders. So whatever. Um, of which now I think we have six. Uh, it's bird it's becoming a thing. Hmm. Yes. Uh, only one squirrel feeder. The squirrel feeder I bought for Rhonda for Christmas. It's like this little tiny picnic table that screws into a tree. And then you screw like a dried corn cob on it. So the squirrels sit at it and eat the <laughs> corn. And it's, it's so damn adorable. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'll have to share meanwhile they're probably just like kind of offended and they're just they're like oh, somebody put out one of those tables they're like they it brings them such joy though let's just go sit at it and eat the corn <laughs> I, we, we put it out like right after christmas and it sat there and the corn sat there and occasionally like a bird would come by and eat corn that had fallen to the table and then fly off and like oh well okay i guess that's a miss and then like that like we had a warm day and some of the squirrels were like oh hell yeah there's corn here 
And like they go through an entire Kava day now. If we put a Kava out there, it's gone by the end of the day. It's oh, wow. yeah, it's pretty amazing. So they probably weren't thinking because like in the dead of winter, they're like, look, we already have our stores. Like we're not, yeah, yeah. We're not That's out, Rhonda said. out yeah. hunting. <laughs> yeah, Rhonda's like, I'm sure that they just like it got warm and it was right when they were finishing their stored food and they were like, oh sweet, I could eat. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. The squirrels are all over now and they're they're running around and taking all the food and whatever they can and having lots of sex in the trees. Who among us? I often see them chasing each other right out there. (laughs) Yeah. I worry about, there's a pair that, um, there's a tree that grows across, the the two trees that kind of are across the road and they'll they'll jump across, which is cool. But then they'll run down and then cross the road again and go up and over. That's their squirrel racetrack or whatever. And I often worry like, they're, they're playing in traffic. They're going to get hit, you know? And then I'm going to have to There's, be the guy that there are gonna be deals with squirrels. it because there will be more squirrels, Gary. Yeah. Well, last year, uh, like November, November, October, October, November was when we had the squirrel that plummeted from the tree to the driveway. And the mother was like, no, nah, I'm good and abandoned it. So we had a baby squirrel in the basement. I, I told you about the baby squirrel, didn't I? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You did. Okay. I shared photos of it. Oh, damn. Yeah. So adorable. Uh, we had a, we have lots of hawks in our neighborhood. Um, at Less least, squirrels at hawks. least one, yeah. at least one, but maybe two. But we saw so last week, uh, there was a hawk in our backyard, and it had caught a bird because there was a whole like a poof of feathers, uh, and it was just sitting there ch- chowing down on that bird. We think maybe it was a quail because we have lots of quail, and it was pretty big. Um, and then like all, I think the next day. We saw another hawk. We think it was probably a different hawk up in the uh, electrical pole outside the house, chomping on something that we think was probably a squirrel. Uh, and we're like, yeah, go, go for those squirrels. We have too many squirrels. When we were in Florida one time, Rhonda looked out the kitchen window and like out the window was another house. I don't know, 10, 12 feet away. Yeah, probably 12 feet away. And there was a hawk there and it was eating something. She looked closer and the hawk had a, a snake nice it's cool i'm like wow that's metal <laughs> that's <Yep. laughs> that's nature is nature's lit man uh so. we have a topic i think maybe we do it's an, um it's not nature Nature's sort of <laughs> Ooh, look at chris we got a clue um sort of nature but I, it's a reach it's a reach um I don't normally bring ologies because I feel like it's a very wide range, but I couldn't resist for this one. It's eschatology. Eschatology. Is that E-S-C-I-T-O-L-O-G-Y? No. E-S-C-H-A-T. Okay. E-S-C-H-A-T. Eschatology. I think that I know what this is. You might. I might be wrong. Is this the study of end times? It is. <laughs> I was yeah. going to say the study of esophaguses. So <laughs> the reason I know that uh, is uh, uh, related to like this concept in religion that like there has to be a thing that happens to end it all, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's like a tale that uh, I, say in, I should say in some religions. Like yeah, the ending say, is the, the primary, it doesn't happen, all, I guess, in all religions, in, in the popular Western religions. So, uh, yeah, like that there's like a, an event that happens that will be the end. So eschatology is the study of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, study yeah. of the event or study of the concept of the event. Like study of the belief that there is an event. I just froze. I don't know. Yeah. I, or did you I freeze? Asked, I like... <laughs> yeah. I asked if it's. Really this, <laughs> I asked if it's the study of the event or the study of the concept of believing that there is an event. Uh, I I'm fairly certain it's the concept in believing the event because I don't think it's specific to any certain event. I think it's the. I think like. I think it can be, um, I don't think it's necessarily tied to religion. I think that you could have like uh, 
eschatology studies like if we were hit by a meteor or something like I, i'm pretty yeah. i'm pretty certain that it's not limited to but part of the um just of course the big the, chunk so, of it is like so, so historical that, meaning meaning that it is going like it is it is assumed that it is going to happen and we're studying the ways in which it can happen i don't know it well, well enough i don't I, so originally stemming from religion, but like I came across it because I'm reading a book that I was going to actually recommend, but I didn't want to recommend it before I did the topic because then I was like, then they're going to find this word. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> overestimate how quickly I read books, Allison. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. It's called The End of Everything, hmm. Astrophysically Speaking um, by Katie Mack, and she's a cosmologist. Cosmologist? Yeah. I always want to say cosmetologist. And I'm like, that's something different. <laughs> that's something else. She might be that too, but primarily. <laughs> um, and so she comes at it from basically like an astrophysicist perspective. And yeah. the book is discussing basically that the only sure thing we know is that the universe is going to end. And hmm. then she goes into five different ways that that's going to potentially happen. And like the five like main theories out there, according to cosmologists of like how this could go. But it's, she's basically, and then she goes and taking that knowledge of like knowing this is going to happen, like how that affects your perception of your day to day or how maybe it doesn't at all or whatever. Yeah, by and large, it's, I expect that it will happen long after I'm gone. Mm-hmm. Generally, so. but like it's the different theories are super interesting. Like there's the one that's basically like the opposite of the Big Bang. So like basically everything contracting and just ending. There's just like, it's all sorts of things. Which is just there's, there's also all, the- all I'm, all I'm just filled with, with visions of the restaurant at the end of the universe. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's also the Ripple. Particularly the BBC Hitchhiker's Guide version of, of that where they're in the, you know, the green- the green dude that's the cow and yeah it's my favorite the, the I, does she talk about the ripple and i don't even know how like serious of a theory this is but the ripple is the idea that like there's a uh like a some kind of gravitational drop would take place and like would cause like a ripple across the universe and it would basically tear everything apart we wouldn't even realize or know that it was happening we just ceased to be yeah that's one of yeah them. that's pretty awesome I haven't gotten to that one yet, so I haven't read read it fully. Um, but yeah, it's Dang, this is know. some light reading. <laughs> yeah, just some light, just some light before bed reading. No, no yeah. big deal. I was wow. telling I was telling Robin that I was like, I don't know if this book is the best thing for me to be reading before bed. Because like there is some like, I don't know, more dense scientific stuff. And I was just kind of like, I'm like, I'm nodding off, but like also it's like really interesting. So I actually want to be like soaking it up anyway that's my book recommendation based on the topic <laughs> yeah i i i love the concept of um uh i feel like it, it 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 dovetails nicely with like this like exploration of things we can't yet understand or are potentially not even scientifically like definable because there are parts of us where where like we can have a theory but inherently like we can't test the theory without destroying everything. And we may not even be able to destroy everything though. I'm certain somebody's trying somewhere. Um, so like, it's a, it'll be a good theory uh, and it could be like the right theory, but it's going to like be the, one of those things that hangs out there, you know, Unless you're super, able, you're able super to interesting yourselves in a space time bubble at the end of the universe and watch it all happen. Yeah. Probably, would you, if you could do that option at the end of the book, <laughs> Would you do that if you could? Watch the end of the universe? Yeah. Uh, no. I Why would not? not. I, I, I... Then afterwards, he'd be all by himself. Well, no. I mean, if, if, we're, using, if we're using Hitchhiker's Guide as, as a model for reality, which is a, always a great idea. Let's do it. Um, See no flaws. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if we're using a Hitchhiker's Guide as a model for reality, then like the idea is that you would stay for the end of the universe 
uh, and then be transported back through time to your original time after the, after the world ends because you saw it happen and then that's the end of the dinner and then you go back uh, home. You deposit money in a bank account. You deposit one cent in a bank account, and then at the end of the universe, it becomes millions and millions of dollars, or whatever, or you know, whatever it converts to in the future. Yeah. Uh, and that pays for your ticket. That's all great. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I don't think I don't think I would I don't think I would go. I think I, it's it's a little bit. It, it touches a level of dark that. Uh, is not one is, is interesting to read about and experience in theory, but I don't know that I would want to experience it in reality. Oh, wow. I think that I have uh, a similar reasoning for the opposite decision. Like it touches an area that is, is just so like vast and enormous and beyond what I can wrap my brain around. So I would want to see it even if it meant like afterwards, like, it's just Gary and he's got to figure out how he finishes out the last remaining that's the part time. That I'm worried about that's that's the, like, it would the, the after you see this thing then what do you do with the rest of your life <laughs> also well, the title of your podcast just Gary <laughs> it would and be entirely worth talking. it it would be entirely worth it if the rest of my life I could just parse that like that I, I mean, think that maybe, there would be so much maybe, to consider that bit of knowledge that it would maybe be. Maybe if you could, if you could time it, crushing. So it, maybe if you could time it so that it was like towards the end of your own life. But that's the that's the trick with the restaurant at the end of the universe is you get called when you get called you get called like it's random. It's like whenever your number is called in the restaurant, so you don't get to you don't get to say I'm going to go on my 81st birthday or something. It's like you just like your number's up. Just like, you know, number five, you know, went back in the day yeah. when people went to like Olive Garden and you had the little glowing, glowing in coasters. The before time. Yeah. In before, before the end time. time. I don't even know. Like, is Olive Garden the thing anymore? I don't even know. I think so. <laughs> um, I'm hoping so. <laughs> yeah, Chris, I, I think that 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 changes it a little for me, but not an awful lot. Not an awful lot. There's one that she mentions that I haven't gotten to yet, but um, do, 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 quantum bubble of death, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, there's one that's uh, the, specul on band name. <laughs> the speculative territory of, of cyclic cosmology, including theories with extra dimensions of space in which our cosmos might be obliterated by a collision with a parallel universe over and over again. And I was like, I can't wait to get to that chapter. <laughs> um this idea of uh of the study of the end times and discussion about the end times uh obviously i everything I, everything that happens in my life i have to tie back to D D because that is where my brain is um so i immediately started thinking of of because i don't know i don't know that there's really uh eschatology in the like D D world, like I don't know that there are people that like study death or study the end, the end of everything. Uh, I don't know that there is a, even a mythology around the end of everything. So it seemed like there it would be a really cool thing to bring in, like you know, a doomsayer, and just have them like on street corner, like don't you see everything's gonna end? And and then that then my my brain started going off into another uh, tangent because I recently read a thread. Uh, on Twitter that was like, hey, DMs, try this trick. And it was like, bring in an NPC, totally normal, totally basic, nothing interesting about them at all, but bring them back into like every single session, randomly in the background doing something. Make sure like the voice is the same, the character, describe them exactly the same way every single time, and then wait for your players to start to develop conspiracy theories about why this person keeps reappearing. And so then I'm thinking, okay, so the, so the doomsayer could just be that thing, like be that person that just keeps randomly appearing. Like what the hell is going on? So would, then, in this case, would the doomsayer be talking about like, be talking like what about, happens like, the things when the that game we know. is over and people walk away from the table? Uh, no, <laughs> I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking like the idea that that the world is gonna, I mean, that everything is going to end at some point, which is not right. a thing that I think that at least in common 
descriptions that I am aware of is not something that people might even be aware of in this sort of like fantasy world. It's not something that people are thinking about. So like, this is the one person who has somehow gotten that insight or maybe he just made it up, but like, he's, he's like the one and he's trying to convince everyone because everybody is in the dark and like, it's a real thing. Like it's tangible. It's not just like some random doomsayer. It's like, no, this, uh, this is really going to happen. Maybe it gets meta and like, it's all about the campaign ending or the game ending or whatever, but like, <laughs> I wonder if it's part of the allure, though, that there is no doomsayer that's talking about those things. The allure of, of the game itself? Like, the allure that that there is no talk of this of it ending. It just is. Versus, mm. like, real life where it comes up once in a while. Mm -hmm. Mostly by me. But, like... <laughs> I One of the things... I, I dropped a link in our Slack because I, I want to make sure we, we capture this because this link has to be in the show notes for for all of our listener, um, all of our listener, the, all of our listener. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, like when, whenever there's a conversation about the universe, one of the things I really like to do is come back. There's the website, like the moon is a pixel and you like scroll from the sun to Mercury, Venus, earth, the moon, Mars. And like, it's to me, like, it's always just like, it's just so magnificent, just how much nothing there is out there oh and this is fun yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, and like well I, i'm wearing my occupy mars shirt and like this idea that like in my i it's it's a pipe dream like it maybe it'll happen that we put humans on mars but establishing like a colony on mars is not happening in my life but but like could we maybe figure out how to get like bags of meat that need like water and air and have to get rid of waste like in a vehicle for six months to get to Mars and land there and they could set foot on that planet. Like, like that's, that's the closest, but like, if we do that, it's going to be another exponential number of years before we can say like, Oh, let's look at somewhere else. I mean, once we hit the moon and Mars, like there's really nowhere else we can stand. That's it. I mean, like, and survive, you know, like it's, it's just, it's magnificent that, that, that looking at that site, like, you know, how, like just how much there isn't, how little there really is, how little reality actually exists. Uh, so I think the universe is, is big, but then like it just really like coming is. down to our solar system, there's, there's nothing. There's so much nothing. Yeah. So much nothing. It's beautiful. It really is. It's beautiful. I'm going to, I, we're just a big fast forward accident. When I walk outside to walk the dog tonight, I will stand outside for 10 minutes staring at the sky after this conversation and just be like, wow, wow. I may just do it after this call, actually. <laughs> do, you, do you own a telescope or anything like that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. The telescope. Yeah. Um, I, I really appreciate um, the moon I'm looking at the moon and thinking like that's a quarter million miles away. And there's this phenomenon that, the rotation of the moon around earth matches the earth uh, matches the moon's rotation on its axis. So we only see one side of the moon. Like what the fuck? Like how, how, how did, how did that come? And honestly, it's not perfect. Like, you know, but we're not going to be around long, around long enough for it to matter anyway. Like if there's a point where the moon actually like shifts and it's, you know, started to move again, like, because of the, the imbalance of weight and the gravitational pulls and starts to rotate, like ain't going to matter to us. Um, it's, it's just, it's, I mean, it's just baffling. Like some of the stuff that we can observe and you go, huh, that's weird. Um, I, I have trouble thinking past the moon and Mars because that's just so big. And then the fact that as I'm saying that sunlight is hitting me and it took I don't remember how long, tens of thousands of years for that proton to make it to the surface of the sun. Eight minutes later, it's plowing into me and giving me skin cancer. Like, holy shit. Where do we go from there? That's like I a... know. That's, 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 <laughs> that's, that's it. I'm sorry. We've, we've just capped the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Chris just clicks end. <laughs> but, uh, but, I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I mean that there's 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 let's magnify that then every star that you can see has that same thing happening that it took tens of thousands of years for that photon to get to the edge to travel in some cases millions of years 
hit your eyeball at night and you're like, wow, that was cool. What? What? I mean, how can you, how can you not walk out like under the stars and not be like, what the hell? Uh, and, and then when you put it in that blanket of emptiness, that there's actually nothing there between that star and you for, I mean, unfathomable distances that you can go that far with, without hitting anything else, no interaction with rocks or space debris or clouds or, I mean, it was like an open shot to the back of your eyeball from a, you know, hundred million years ago. Uh, and we just walk out every night like, oh yeah, the stars are out again. Holy shit, the stars are out again. But Gary. <sighs> I'm going to get so lit tonight before I go out and look at the stars. <laughs> in science fiction, <laughs> in science fiction, there's interplanetary travel all the time. I know. I know. I know. I, I mean, I like almost any science, science fiction movie where there's there's. Uh, faster than light travel like i would love to live in like that reality that would be amazing anyone even the ones where like humans are hunted like okay that seems like a fair trade-off i'll, I'll give it a go right what about but can you imagine like just pick like one universe like just, just pick star trek like star trek is really earth-centric this idea that like cool humanity came together and created this federation okay well that seems like a stretch anyway but whatever fine we can go with it and then it took, you know, X thousand years. And now we're like a spacefaring species and we're bumping into other spacefaring species. And we're having these conversations and these thoughts about um, like, how do beings interact? Not just humans, but like things that can communicate and have some sense of relationship with other things. How do they interact and how do they communicate and how do they get along with that, get along with each other and get along with um, clear trespassers in their system, especially species that are not yet spacefaring and that constant conversation in star trek and how do you deal with a species that's not spacefaring uh i mean it's it's just like it's just it's like it's just it's such a humbling time to be alive to be able to even just have the space forgive the pun this like space and this energy and this area to just even like ponder this and not have to go out and like slap the plow to the ox and you know make my dinner i mean it's it's like it's just baffling. It is just baffling. So that's my all mind, I got today. My mind goes to uh, like Event Horizon instead and like the idea that you uh, go through like whatever whatever technology you, you use to, to go through these vast distances has some sort of dark underbelly that's going to corrupt you and cause you to kill all of your crewmates. Just two sides it, of a coin. That's what I'm dealing exact, with. Here. Two exact opposite sides of the coin. We've got like hope and but I, and love and faith and, but Chris, and diplomacy, and we've got killing everyone on the ship and making sure no one uh, escapes alive. I'm taking that coin flip, man. I'm taking that coin flip 100. percent Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Binary Jazz.